Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the Traveling Man and welcome to day two of my trip here on board the Norwegian Encore. We're headed to Alaska this morning. It's our first sea day. You can see here behind me. We are currently sailing. Um, you can see some land back there. You won't be able to pick it up on video, but I can see some land. That's actually Canada. We're actually sailing in the Pacific Ocean north along the western coast of Canada until we reach Alaska. We will get to Alaska tomorrow, not until like two or three in the afternoon that we'll be in Juneau, Alaska. So make sure you come back and see those vlogs. Right now I'm actually looking for breakfast and there's plenty of breakfast options around the ship. There's of course the local grill. There are the two main dining rooms are open for breakfast. The buffet, of course. I wanna check out Starbucks and see what that line's like in the morning. It's currently 8, 10 a.m. So uh, I've already seen quite a few people out. It's quite chilly out here on the main deck. There's not any people that I can see. I'm on deck eight on the waterfront on the section, sort of the promenade on the ship. I don't see anyone uh, out here this morning. It is only uh, 50 degrees where we're at currently. So come on if you're ready. Let's get this sea day adventure started. One of the things that I noticed last night that I wanted to show you is these displays that they have. It looks like just a normal display. You will see these in the elevator and stairwells right near them uh, on every floor, I think. Uh, but it looks just like a normal display, right? They're advertising things. However, you can touch these and it's actually going to pull up a lot of different things that you can make reservations for, like dining and click on that. You can see it's going to pull up, um, you know, the different restaurants and things like that that you can make reservations for. Uh, let me go back. How do we go back? We'll just go home. Oh, there we go. If I wanted to ride the go-karts, which I do, we'll click that here on one of these. And I noticed you can't really do the go-karts on the app. So this is your way to make those go-kart reservations. And you see there's no availability anyways. But if there was, and if it would say reserve here, I could click reserve. It would then tell me to tap my room card here. And that's how it registers the reservation. I would then be able to make the reservation and do go-karts. And I know this because I did it last night and I'll be riding go-karts in a couple of days, but um, you can actually make go-kart reservations on the Norwegian app. You do have to do it either at the box office or here at one of these displays on board. So pretty cool that they have those. And again, these are in every stairwell and elevator bank on board the ship. So now on deck seven headed into the local uh, and this is, of course, open 24-7, but it is one of the places to open for breakfast. And you can see there is, like, virtually no one in here. Again, about 8, 10, 8, 15 in the morning. Uh, just about everything's open. There's a few folks sitting over here. But uh, maybe a lot of people are still asleep. But there do seem to be quite a number of breakfast options available. I was surprised at the number of venues that do serve breakfast here on the Encore. So that's good. A ship with 4,000 people, you want as many venues as possible to make sure that folks are spread out and that there's not long waits or just large groups of people uh, eating at any one time. And also, I'm probably just up early as well. A lot of people probably still uh, in bed sleeping off last night. This is uh, the elevator bank on deck seven. I just wanted to show you how pretty this ship is. Everywhere you go, it's just, uh, everything has just been so well done. It's a very well designed ship. Now here on deck six in the main atrium, uh, it's quiet down here. That's the lowest guest service line I've seen so far being on the ship. So. Yeah, it must be people still are in bed this morning. And then now we're coming up on the Starbucks, which will be the big test of how busy it is early this morning. Uh, if you come in here, you see a few people in line, but not really what I expected it would be. Um, I expected there to be a lot more people this early in Starbucks, but I'm gonna get in line and get my coffee for the morning. So in a battle against the local bar and grill versus the main dining room, the local bar and grill won. I actually went and got my Starbucks and I brought it up here with me. So here is the breakfast menu. It is, a, of course, a shorter menu than what they normally have in the for lunch and dinner. Uh, but you see they have an American breakfast, they have an English breakfast, they have corned beef hash, French toast, they have hot oatmeal, uh, buttermilk pancakes, uh, they have omelets to choose from, a breakfast sandwich. So they have actually a lot. They also serve uh, Starbucks coffee here. You can get espressos, cappuccinos, cafe latte, and then just regular coffee, of course. So several options here at the local bar and grill. And right now it's not busy at all. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I really enjoyed the local bar and grill yesterday for lunch. So I can't wait to see what the breakfast offering is like. And that was super fast. Just uh, maybe three to five minutes after ordering my food, I got it. I went for the French toast, which looks delicious. It's served with some butter there and also some syrup. And then I also got some hash browns on the side. And these look like, you know, the typical hash browns you get on a cruise. I think all cruise lines use these same hash browns. But uh, this looks really good. And I can't wait to dig in and enjoy my breakfast here at the local. And this is the main pool deck at 9 a.m. on a sea day. You can see nobody out here trying to save loungers. Uh, no chair hogs, as they call them. 
uh, people just transiting really walking you know around where they need to go around the pool deck but no one really hanging out out here and of course the pool strangely is uh, empty so now here in the garden cafe about an hour later it's about 9.05 and you can see it's just swamped with people in here there are people everywhere uh, there was sort of a line to, you know, wash everyone's hand to get in here. All of the tables over here look pretty full. It doesn't look like a whole lot of places to sit. Uh, so just be mindful that, especially on a sea day, and I'm sure at port days too, this is where you're going to find the most crowds, the buffet. So if you want to go somewhere quieter, you saw how quiet it was at the local. We haven't gone to the main dining rooms yet, um, but definitely don't come to the buffet if you want a quiet, nice, secluded dinner and a place to sit down. So now I'll hop down to deck 15 in the observation lounge, and it's much quieter vibe down here they do have a lighter options for breakfast you know they have muffins they have some danishes some croissants uh some more deli meat and cheese some yogurts and things like that they also have if we come around here they have some cereals and some more takeaway things some fruit and milk so um yeah if you want a lighter fare breakfast a much quieter breakfast too you can see the pan around here there's much fewer people down here than there were up in the buffet the buffet was just crazy there were people everywhere um but they had a lot of food so that's good but um yeah maybe consider coming to deck 15 you have great views here looking out over the ocean on the sea day and very few people i also have the map in here inside the observation lounge that shows uh where we're at so you can see uh let me get in here a little bit closer you can see we left seattle down there yesterday and now we're off the western coast of canada headed way up there we still even have much further to go even north of ketchikan to get to juno so a long way to cover today on the rocky ocean as we head to alaska okay so headed back to my room now i did want to say uh that i really enjoy the local so both times i went there i went there for lunch yesterday and then of course breakfast today it's a really cool vibe in there it feels like you're at a local diner it doesn't feel like you're in a main dining room or any other dining establishment that i've ever eaten at on board a cruise ship so that's really cool i like how they make it seem like a 24-hour diner so that's really nice i'm just here now in the studio lounge having a bit of coffee doing some reading uh, and they just came on and did an announcement. It's currently 9.45. They said at 10, they're having a This Is Alaska presentation in the main theater. And I had heard about this on these Alaska cruises. They do a lot of presentations. Um, they tell you about the history, about the wildlife, about some of the places we're going to visit. And I love that stuff. I'm a big geography nerd. I'm a big nerd for, like, culture and just seeing all the world. So I think I'm going to head up to that. There's also one at 11 in the observation lounge about, like, the history of Alaska. So I think it's going to be a very informative day for me to hear, like, all about Alaska. Uh, so I'm going to head there right now. But I did want to show for those of you who might be interested, this is, again, 945 uh, in the morning on a sea day. There's no one in the studio lounge. It's all to myself. There's just been one or two people in or out getting coffee and stuff. Um, they have orange juice and ice water here. Now, they always have ice water, but the orange juice changes. Last night, they had iced tea, so it just depends on what time of the day, what as to what drink they might have. But they have some assorted danishes here. There's some fruit again. And then, of course, the wine dispenser. I showed some of this yesterday, but just wanted to show again so you have an idea of what they have at different times throughout the day. I also noticed this morning, I uh, talked about those boards where you could reserve uh, certain things, entertainment, dining, things like that. There is one of those in here. So if you are staying in a studio room and you have access to the studio lounge, you can take care of all your reservations right here uh, from the convenience of the studio lounge, which is a very quiet, tranquil place to sit and enjoy the morning. So just left the uh, this is Alaska talk it was actually this short excursion talk uh, but they did a really good job at it it didn't seem like they were just constantly trying to sell us on stuff they really presented each of the ports in a unique way so I appreciated that when I first got in there and realized I was like oh no this is the short excursion talk I normally don't go to those because it's just like the hard sell to book excursions but this was very well done and the way that they presented the history of Alaska they talked about each of the ports where we were going and then they discussed some of the options that they had uh, I've already booked all of my excursions for this trip. Now I'm walking on deck seven. This is like the promenade on deck seven out here by the lifeboats. Uh, if you're up near the theater, the Encore Theater, if you go outside there, you can walk toward the aft of the ship all along the side. Uh, and there's never anyone out here. So if you have maybe an inside cabin like I do or an ocean view and you want a place you can come outside, maybe come out here on deck seven because there's never anyone out here. So 
We're now here on deck six in the main atrium, and it's about 11.30 in the morning, and things are hopping. All the guest services and onboard credit and short excursion desks are crowded. They're having a special presentation here uh, in the center. This is, I think, a lot of the uh, officers and stuff. Uh, the atrium bar is really kicking over here. So just back in the room because it was like bedlam downstairs. There were so many people in the atrium because they were having so much. I was trying to go to the internet cafe that they have, but the line was at least 20 people long. And that's for only one crew member that works that. And I feel so sorry for her. She was such a great help yesterday. Uh, but it's so many people like in line and it's just she's just inundated all day my Norwegian app stopped working I can't get into it. It kept doing this thing yesterday where it was continually logging me off And I was actually having to sign in with my looking up my reservation So there's two methods to sign into the app You can either log in using your Norwegian account, which is like the account you would book your cruise and pre-plan your cruise That wouldn't work. So I had to look it up by my reservation And that means I have to type in a lot of like personal information like my full name like the date of my sailing my birthday So it's a lot to type in every time. Well today it did it again and actually I can't even get On the app at all. It won't even let me log in. It just spins and spins. It just gets stuck So I don't know what's wrong uh, But I will say that so far other than those panels that I showed you earlier where you can make the reservations Technology kind of sucks on Norwegian. It's kind of lacking because when you live and die by the app like most cruise lines do now meaning you can make reservations on there it's got your daily planner you know i had favored it a bunch of things i wanted to go to a lot of activities if i'm out and about on the ship i don't have the freestyle um pamphlet that they put in your room i forget what it's called the freestyle something uh that they the little you know the paper version of the schedule i don't have that so i need to look up and see like what's going on around the ship and i can't do that if your app doesn't work so norwegian fix your app your ships are fantastic it's a beautiful ship um, having a good experience so far, but the technology is very unbecoming of a ship this nice because it's just not there. So um, thumbs way down today for the Norwegian app. It's not working for me and I'm not really pleased about it because I have a lot of stuff on there. All my dining reservations and everything is like housed on there. That's how I was keeping track of everything, you know, and now I can't even access it and I'll have to go <laughs> wait in line with 25 other people now uh, to get that looked at or get it fixed hopefully, but I'll keep trying. I'll keep, I'm Deleting the app. I've done that three times and that doesn't work deleting and redownloading that takes a lot of time too because of the internet, but That's the technology situation here on board the ship. It ain't great. Speaking of a cool ship uh, This is really neat because instead of like a physical uh, Do not disturb sign which most cruise lines have they actually have buttons here so I could turn on the do not disturb Or I could turn on the makeup room sign and what that does we go just outside the stateroom this door is in my way um, you see that there's these panels outside each of the doors um, so I can actually flip mine now if I want my room made up and see that lights up there or if I don't want to be disturbed I can turn on the do not disturb and then the at home down there you see that's lit up that's because you have to have your key card in here uh, in order for the lights to come on my key cards not in there but I think they did something to it to indicate that I was in here even though I'm not um, but I think this is really cool uh, and this is on all the state rooms throughout the entire ship. Um, the only one I don't like is the at home. I feel like that's a little bit uh, too much information. I don't think people on board the ship need to know whether or not I'm in my room. So I don't like that, you know, the at home button. I'm not really comfortable with that. Um, but everything else is really cool. And while I'm in my room, I did want to say something about cleanliness because uh, I did notice this yesterday when I first got to the room. This looks like some makeup on the wall. Um, and I meant to mention it to my stateroom attendant, but I didn't get an opportunity to. It was here yesterday, uh, and I was like, well, maybe they just missed it cleaning yesterday. Well, now they've just cleaned the room for today, and uh, it's still here. So, um, we'll deduct some points for cleanliness here, because that's like all down the wall here. That's right here in the sink area um, of, you know, the little bathroom. Uh, well, not bathroom, but the little sink area of the room. Oh, and one more thing. I know earlier I told you I was going to go up to the observation lounge. They were having a history of Alaska, like, audio guide. And I didn't really know what that meant. I thought it meant maybe, like, a lecturer was going to be there and, and, and talking about Alaska. I went up there. There were a ton of people up there for it. And I walked in just a little bit late, maybe about three or four minutes late. And I heard this, like, very, like, faint, like, tour guide sounding, like, talking. But it, you could tell it was pre-recorded. And then I realized they're just playing over the loudspeaker in the observation lounge, this history of Alaska, sort of like cassette tape or something. And it was so faint and so many people were in there and they were talking, people were at the bar, you couldn't even hear it. So um, 
I just did a loop around Observation Lounge and left. So not really worth it. So just keep that in mind if you see that on the itinerary and you think that audio history of Alaska sounds like a good idea. It ain't. Unless you just want to sit there and try to listen, but I, I don't know how anyone was getting anything from it. It, it literally, uh, for me, it seemed like it was unable to be heard. So that's the situation on that. It is now 10 minutes until noon, and I think I'm going to head downstairs and eat my second meal of the day. I think I'm going to go to the main dining room because they are having lunch in there, serving lunch in the main dining room, and I haven't been to the main dining room yet. I'm going to be going there for dinner also tonight, but I want to try it out for lunch also. So I think I'm going to head down and see what lunch is like in the main dining room. deck six just aft of the art gallery you'll find the mix bar here and then on one side of the ship you'll have saver which is one of the main dining rooms and over across from that is taste which is the other main dining room that's where i dine for lunch today all right so just back in the room now after a delicious lunch in the main dining room uh my first time in the main dining room on norwegian and honestly i've heard a lot of stories recently a lot of people send me a lot of comments leading up to this cruise saying oh, norwegian food has not been good um, and I believe them, but um, I was like, Ugh, not really sure what to expect in the main dining room. The main dining room today, though, for lunch, I went in the Taste dining room, and it was really good. They had some really good barbecue in there, and I was really skeptical because I've had barbecue on a cruise ship before, and I was like, oh, it's going to be another one of those, like, eh, type of barbecues, but it was really good. So I was really pleasantly surprised, and so far, all the food is surprised. Then afterward, I went up to the buffet. It was swamped in there, not a place to sit. They had my favorite cake, a tres leches. So I tried that. They also had a like Mexican chocolate cake, so I had to try a little bit of that too. Not as good, but that tres leches cake was phenomenal. So the food so far is good here on board the Encore. It is now almost one o'clock in the afternoon. I've been going since like eight o'clock this morning. So I'm gonna take a beat. I'm gonna read some. I'm just gonna enjoy the afternoon here on board. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit later on. left in my room were my shore excursion tickets and these are all the excursions that I booked through Norwegian of course and I did book all the excursions I'm doing this trip directly through Norwegian and this was because when I booked the cruise I booked it with their free at sea um, and it basically took $50 off of any excursion uh, one excursion per port I think and then I also upgraded to the free at sea plus which was an additional cost but that included an additional $50 off a second excursion if I wanted to so some ports I'm doing more than one excursion in the port, so I saved quite a bit of money. And I just counted and I have a total of six excursions this trip. And I think all those together cost me something after the discount and everything, like $290, which isn't that bad, especially considering I'm doing the train in Skagway, which was, I think, close to like $200 or something. It was quite a saving. So that free at sea and that free at sea plus really helped me to save some money. I know there's a lot of things that I booked excursions for that probably could have done cheaper just doing it on my own. But since I did have that $50 discount each port, I thought I would take advantage of that and just have a little bit more security and going with the cruise line this time. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm actually going to be doing separate videos for my excursions, so make sure you come back and see those as we check out Alaska together. So what an evening it's been here so far on board. It's currently uh, 9 o'clock almost, and it's not even dark. That's how light it is because, of course, we're going north to Alaska, and it's daylight a lot longer there in the summer. So... Uh, it's been a great evening on board though. I went to dinner in the main dining room tonight and I will include uh, a couple of shots of what I had, but I will talk more about that of course in my food review video that will be out very soon. Then I went to Choir of Man. Choir of Man is I think the only stage production show that we will have on board this cruise. A very good show. It was an hour and 15 minutes, but it was very good. Norwegian actually calls this, you know, their most popular show, like the thing that people request 
and I think, uh, you know, it might be on very few of their ships. And it's actually the only entertainment option that was actually available to book or reserve ahead of the cruise. So I was able to get that reservation a few weeks ago. I went to the 7.30 show and it didn't end at 8.45. It was a fantastic show. So I highly encourage you, if you are going to be on board the Encore or another ship that might have Choir of Man, that you book that as soon as you can. Because if you wait till boarding day, you're not going to get to see it. If you probably wait to the day after it opens for booking, you're not going to be able to see it. So uh, get on there and make that reservation. It was a very good show. And so far, it's been a very good evening on board the ship. It is much cooler now than it was earlier. It's now, uh, the temperature is about 45 degrees. It's very windy. I'm going to have to go back in because it's so cold. But it's so cool to start to see the landscape change as we near Alaska. We are going to be in Juneau tomorrow. But we're already starting to see some of Alaska here as we sail north. Uh, and it's going to be exciting tomorrow when we get up and we're actually going to be inside uh, some of the inside passage as we head up to Juneau. So it's going to be really exciting. And of course, I have a lot more content to come from here on board the Norwegian Encore. In fact, in the video that I'm doing tomorrow, I'm going to start the day off on a highlight. It's going to be a cold highlight, but I'm actually going to go up and ride the go-karts in the morning. So you want to make sure you come back and see that next video. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I drop that next video. I have a lot more footage to come. We're gonna be in Alaska tomorrow. I'm gonna to start those Alaskan vlogs. Can't wait to show you Alaska. So make sure you go down below and subscribe. But for now, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm having a great time on board the Norwegian Encore and I can't wait to show you more of my adventures. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.